Listen, I don't care if people try to claim recency bias. I don't care if people try to tell me, no, actually, it should have been like this. It felt like this or that. I don't care. For me, this is the single greatest moment I've seen in My Hero Academia. No cap, no joke. I assume she wasn't going to make it. I haven't really been spoiled on anything in this manga. I stay away from social media and I've been fairly respected and thanks to mods and stuff I avoid a lot of big stuff. But I assume she wouldn't make it. The quirk seemed too powerful. It seemed like the most OP thing you could use. However, Shiggy is in a very interesting state of not dying, so I assume he would pull through, kill her, and steal the quirk and it would be very bad. I did not, however, see the destroying of the corks coming whatsoever. I assumed he would kill her. I assumed he would steal the quirk. But the idea of imposing a, a, a rule onto this quirk about how it would basically, it would destroy, it would fight all other quirks. And what would happen if someone stole a quirk that has that order applied to it and you have how many god knows how many quirks inside you? It would start destroying itself because essentially, you just infected yourself with a virus, and the thing is, is that's enough for me to be like, that's the coolest shit I've seen. She took it up a notch. This two-episode character, three if you want to count the tease after last season, but really, two-episode character, she makes it so he can't even give the quirk to someone else. <laughs> Star and Stripes is the greatest character this manga and anime has ever seen. Give me a side OVA special of a few episodes of her prior to this moment, and I'm gonna be a happy camper, but that was freaking fantastic. Full live reaction, if you want to see me absolutely stumped and almost jump out of my chair, it's gonna be over on my Patreon alongside all these wonderful episodes if you're interested. I didn't know what to expect other than she probably ain't making it, and her cork ain't gonna make it. And then when it all started happening, I'm like, oh, who, who are they gonna give the cork to, right? Because I'm like, it would make the most sense if they do do it, to do it to a character we already have a connection to, whether that's a hero or a villain, just so we don't have to do new characterization, new intros and stuff, because we are in the end game, right? And then I'm like, oh shit, like this is probably going to be the worst person to give it to. The It's just so cool because this quirk seems broken in the best way. It feels like Horikoshi came up with this idea that he's like, listen, if I had this be a central quirk, for the entirety of my manga, it's probably going to get into a territory of either there's no stakes or I can't continuously find creative ways to use the most broken thing I came up with. So instead, we're going to throw her into America. She's been doing her shit in America and that's all well and good. She comes in and into the end game for what's going on in Japan and we're going to end her and begin her all in the best possible way in the most creative way. And I honestly don't see a single hole in the writing with how they handled this because the initial we ended in such a cool way, basically pinning him down. He can't really regenerate, he can't move, but it's not enough. The animation when she grabbed the dozen or so missiles and then redirected into that big ass punch. I mean, props to Shiggy, man. That burying yourself in the hole and then having uh, the Namu kind of be like your decoy or whatever was just so cool. But like, the animation went in hard, but it wasn't just like there was big explosions. Everything about these two going at each other was written so intelligently. But yeah, the icing on the cake is her death and what she implied with the rule. Because when she got God, I was like, why is she doing this? I assume she probably had to have had a plan, but I didn't know what she did. Because I'm like, you're giving up, arguably, the worst thing you can give to the final villain. Because if he would have been able to keep that quirk... I don't think we would win. And I don't think that's an exaggeration. I really feel that giving Shiggy... I don't think he needed any other... Between Decay and New Order? I mean, that, that would have been game over Rip Bozos real quick. And the idea of sacrificing yourself, not only just to protect your homies, which I thought the homies had the death flag more than anything, at least at the start. And then the idea of the animation of how it just, like, it ruptures and... Sh <laughs> you know the meme? Kind of like that meme where it's like, okay, you're trying to tell the person that they're trapped with you, but in actuality, you're trapped with them. That's what happened. And the rupturing of himself and the cannibalism of himself and then how he's rushing to find someone. It was such a cool fight that even if you got spoiled that she was going to die, which to be honest, I mean, 
most people, whether they're spoiled or not, are probably gonna assume the most OP thing we've seen ain't gonna make it out of this situation, and if she does, her quirk's at the very least being stolen. There's no way, because it, it catches you by surprise because of how quickly everything keeps rapidly expanding, and it sideswipes you with the coolest of deaths. Because it doesn't feel like a death that was wasted. Sometimes when you have these like really impressive characters, essentially female All Might, and what we end up doing is we're like, damn it, you introduce such a character that I prefer following over a majority of these characters and you kill them so quick. But here it's like, the death mattered. Because we actually, we don't know how many quirks we destroyed, but he's a lot more weak than where he would be once he was fully awakened. We also gave them an, because, it had this all not happened, probably the next day he would have been at full capacity. Now it's going to be a week. This actually had meaning. It nerfs your final villain, not in the way that they're useless, but it gives you a fighting chance. You started the season in the arc in the coolest possible way possible. And I'm just left saying, you know, throughout all these seasons, people have told me that some seasons are ass, some seasons are great. I've consistently enjoyed this show. Some seasons are better than others. And I think last season was the best of the best that we saw of My Hero Academia. But the best part about this is that while, yes, you can make arguments, did certain ca characters get underutilized or underdeveloped? Absolutely. That's always going to happen in a large cast, unfortunately. But the best part is that what they did with the villains and the story of Deku and everyone, like the core thing, the escalation and the stakes, they actually feel like we reached a point of like, oh shit, this is a true end battle and I absolutely respect it. The thing about My Hero is that like, at the end of the day, would I call My Hero a favorite of mine? It's like, I probably would have to, given that I've covered it for so long and I've always really looked forward to watching it. It's one of the my favorite shows that I know I'm gonna watch every year. But it's like, it's not a top 10 anime for me by any stretch. But I love the fact that you so rarely get to see not only a full adaptation that's as consistent as this. Maybe the animation and art does dip often on, but for a seven running season and however many movies they popped out, it's pretty impressive Bones kept up as much quality as they did. But like, I just feel rewarded as a viewer. I feel like looking back at my feelings when season one aired, I saw the potential but I never expected it to reach consistently high points every season. And there's always been a high point every season, if there's even if there's been medium and low points. This is arguably one of the coolest endgames you could ask for. And it just feels rewarding. Let me know what you thought down below, whether you knew what was coming or you just walked in thinking it's all going to be sunshine and rainbows. What did you think down below? What did you think of what I consider to be the coolest and most impactful moment in My Hero Academia? But let me know what you're feeling down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can notify when I upload more. And like I mentioned, got those full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, why over there? I'll also give you a video shout out. All right, so today we got Julia Daniel Witzk, Emma K. Pop, Sandra Nuns, 0451 Jim, Mobita, Lexin13, and we also have Feather. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.